Welcome to 10 TV Plus, Dylan Robichaud. And then over here we have Michael Behrens. Talk about a dry day out there today. <laughs> Warm and windy, but a little bit of whiplash tomorrow as it gets colder. Yeah, I mean, we've really seen a little bit of everything over the past week. We had severe weather this weekend, some snowflakes Sunday night. Now fire weather today and maybe severe weather tonight. And we begin right now with a look at the red flag <laughs> warning, which is in effect for at least half of the viewing area for today. That red flag warning is in effect right now until this evening. Why? Low humidity, winds up to 35 miles per hour. That's all it takes here. We've had a few dry days now for those fuels to dry out. And this is mainly off down to our southeast until about 10 o'clock this evening. So that expires just in time, of course, for some of the showers to move into the region as we head overnight tonight. Now let's take a look here at that wind here. And we could occasionally get some winds up and over 30 miles per hour here, especially by four o'clock in the afternoon, 32 miles per hour, continuing through about five and six o'clock. And honestly, tonight, tomorrow, both days kind of on the blustery side. All right, so let's begin here, heading into two o'clock this afternoon, tracking winds 30, 35, occasionally, make it up to around 41 miles per hour. That may be pushing it a bit. If that does happen, it would be from Kenton down to Urbana as we head off to the southeast, so not quite as bad for this evening. And then uh, winds will be blustery heading into tonight and, of course, heading into tomorrow. Let's talk about our next rainmaker here. And this is pretty peculiar because we are tracking blizzard-like conditions for parts of the Great Plains here, as this is going to be marching into our neck of the woods as we head into tonight. Let's go ahead and actually uh, put on a tracker where exactly we expect that to go. And it's going to take a track a little bit farther to our southeast. And uh, between the warm front and that arrow that I just drew, that's where that, uh, that sweet spot will be for thunderstorms overnight tonight. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. You'll notice that the clouds moving on in, your flow coming from the southwest. So that's going to allow that moisture to be uh, in ample supply. 11 o'clock, though, notice right here at 11 o'clock, the line of showers looks pretty good, looks pretty healthy. But watch what happens, though. It runs out of gas, okay, as we head towards 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Now we're just tracking plain old showers. So I'm not really concerned about that convective severe threat here in central Ohio, more like out towards the west, out towards I-75. Heading into tomorrow, leftover showers and wild to think about it. Today, we're in the 70s. Tomorrow, we're looking at enough cold air that we could be looking at some snowflakes kind of mixing in to the picture. All right, latest severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. This right here, level one out of five, marginal threat. The best risk of tornadoes, hail out towards Indiana and out towards Illinois. They're about to get hit pretty bad out there later on today. This afternoon, low 70s. Here are my thoughts. Athens, Caldwell, down towards Jackson, around 70 degrees. And then take a look at that tight cutoff here. Much cooler as we head up to the northwest. Tomorrow, though, whiplash here. We got some colder air moving on in. Within the last two hours, we just updated these numbers. We're looking at temperatures about 25 degrees cooler tomorrow. And some of you, some spots here like Athens, about 30 degrees colder tomorrow. All right. That's the magic about this time of the year. Also, spring begins at 501 in the morning tomorrow. What does that mean? At 501, the sun is pointed directly at the equator. All right. We call it the vernal equinox here. Equinox standing for equal days, equal nights. So the whole earth gets about 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness, give or take a few minutes. Today, very warm. Okay, we got that southwesterly wind. But again, here's your jet stream. The thing to keep in mind, the jet stream is a controller of our temperatures. So as we head towards the next couple of days, take a look at that. By tomorrow, 24 hours from right now, if you're not paying attention to the forecast, that will be an abrupt change for you. It's, it's about to get a whole lot cooler out here. Getting a look right now at the extended here, Friday, 55 degrees. 55, a very popular number. Saturday, though, tracking a quick weather maker. This is moving very fast, though. Here are my thoughts. Early Saturday, before lunchtime, get a couple of showers. That gets out of here. So Saturday afternoon, Sunday, both looking pretty good. We'll take that. Monday tracking some more rain. Tuesday looking at a few scattered showers as well. And then it looks like 
We're not looking at any more major cool downs, but also no major warm ups either, as we're going to be in the 50s. That's actually about where we should be by late March standards. Yeah, getting a little bit back toward normal by the end of the forecast. I mean, I had a couple people ask me last week when our forecast was so warm, can they plant their garden? Can they get out and, and put the winter things away? And I told them, not yet. Don't get not fooled. Yet. <laughs> March is kind of, you got two seasons kind of battling it out. So. Yeah. That's kind of the month that you got to pay attention because you'll be caught off guard very fast. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of the seasons battling themselves out, that's part of the reason we see so much severe weather this time of the year. And while well, we had our statewide tornado drill earlier today, doesn't mean it's too late to talk about where to go during a tornado. And Dylan, you've got some more information to serve us on Absolutely, that. yeah. If you are anything like uh, living in one of the All-American homes, of course, you have many different rooms that you can go in in the event of a tornado. But of course, where is the safest spot to go? Well, that's what I'm here for. So again, the typical house has either a deck or a backyard or a patio, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, closet, garage, you name it. Best places to be here would be an interior room. If you don't have a basement, this is where you want to go. A stairwell, a hallway, a closet, or maybe even a bathroom here, covering yourself with a blanket or mattress for protection. In some cases, even a helmet, not a bad idea. But again, the safest place to be always the basement. That's by far going to be your best bet. You're underground. You have that concrete uh, to protect you. So that's where you want to go. If you are like me, I live in an apartment. So what do I do? Ideally, you want to get down to the lowest floor. Remember, we have on average 10 to 15 minute lead time before tornadoes. So you want to get down to the lowest floor possible and you want to go to places like a laundry room. Uh, garages are great. Bathrooms are great. If you are upstairs, you want to move inward again. Basic premise here. Get away from windows. Get towards uh, the innermost part of your apartment and you want to protect your head as well. You can use blanket, pillow, whatever, because the fear, of course, is flying debris coming through that window that could kill you. So you got to be very, very careful. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of good advice there. And, and, you know, we're only just getting started with severe weather season. We had a couple of warnings this weekend, but, you know, uh, we can see those types of storms any time of year. So this isn't just advice for the spring. Last year, February, yeah. I believe, if my memory serves correctly. So, yeah, February, we started tornado season last year and we ended the last one a couple days before New Year's Eve, December yep. 29th. We had a tornado. Yep. Yep. So those happen any time of the year. And as part of our continuing coverage here on Ohio Severe Weather Awareness Week, I was also able to break down more information about those tornadoes, the warnings themselves, and how they actually form. This is a piece I recorded earlier this week. Tornadoes are some of the strongest forms of severe weather we can see here in Ohio. And last year we set a record with 74 tornadoes striking the Buckeye State. Put those on a map and they look something like this. Each one of those lines, a path carved by a tornado around Ohio just last year. And we know these tornadoes don't just strike during severe weather season. Each of the 12 months of our calendar has recorded at least one tornado over the last 50 plus years. In fact, last year we had a tornado in December. So with all that in mind, we want to break down how these storms actually form. It all starts with the winds. You get surface winds and winds aloft blowing in different directions. That creates rotation in the atmosphere. Put it together with thunderstorm updrafts and that rotation can lift and tilt down toward the surface. From there, we form something called a wall cloud. A wall cloud is the precursor to a tornado. If it continues to build and works its way down to the ground. That's when it actually does become a tornado. If it doesn't touch the ground, it's just considered a funnel cloud. Our job as meteorologists is to warn you ahead of time when these types of severe weather could occur and it all starts with a watch. That means be prepared. Conditions are favorable for tornadoes, but we're not quite there yet. From there, we upgrade to a warning. This is when a tornado has either been detected by radar or seen by a person. A tornado emergency, that's the highest level of warning. This means not only has a tornado been detected, it is on the ground and doing considerable damage. If all this seems a little confusing, let's put it in terms of baking. Let's talk about a cupcake watch. This means the ingredients are in place, have a plan, but we don't have cupcakes just yet. 
a cupcake warning. Well, the baked goods are done. The storms are here. It's time to take action. Of course, that tornado action plan does need to include some important steps, including grabbing important documents and pets, going to your safe place and staying connected to get the latest alerts until those storms have passed. And the reason this is so important is just because of the damage that tornadoes can cause. I want to show you how strong these winds can get. The weakest level tornado EF0 that's going to cause minor damage to roofs and trees. We upgrade from there to an EF1, but lots of shingles missing power poles coming down at this point, and it only gets worse from here. We upgrade this to an EF2. That's when roofs start to get blown off of houses and cars flipped over and EF3. We're destroying entire floors of a house and EF4 that's leveling even well built houses. Cars are thrown great distances and once we get to an EF5, there's nothing left but a concrete slab and sometimes even that can get ripped up from the surface. Of course, with so much danger related to this form of severe weather, our job is to keep you safe at home and that's what the 10 TV weather impact team will do all throughout the year. And of course, we are only now halfway through Severe Weather Awareness Week here in Ohio, and all of our coverage will be streaming on demand via the 10 TV Plus app. Just download the app on your TV and watch for free anytime. Now to some space news, astronaut Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams are back on Earth after an unexpectedly long nine month stay aboard the International Space Station. They're part of a crew that splashed down off the coast of Florida yesterday evening. Wilmore and Williams are now in Houston where they'll spend a couple of days before going home with their families. CBS News's Karen Hua is also in Houston with more on their long awaited return. A Houston homecoming. Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams reunited with loved ones hours after their return from a 286 day space odyssey. Splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. The SpaceX Dragon carrying Wilmore and Williams, along with Crew 9 Commander Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov, splashed down off the coast of Tallahassee, Florida at just before 6 p.m. yesterday. Some happy waves, smiles all around. A pod of dolphins swam nearby as the recovery team pulled the capsule out of the water and later assisted the four crew members as they climbed out. In Williams' hometown in Massachusetts, residents gathered to root for her return. We all kind of feel relieved that she's like safe. Wilmore and Williams are expecting to spend at least a day or two more here at the Johnson Space Center as medical staff evaluate them, making sure they're readjusting to the pull of gravity back here on Earth. Ignition. The two astronauts launched on the first human test flight of the Boeing Starliner in June of last year, but the vessel developed propulsion problems and for safety reasons returned to Earth without them, stretching their planned eight day mission to nine months. It was a SpaceX vessel that finally brought them home after it carried their replacements to the ISS. And it shows the benefits of the commercial public private partnership that we have. During their extended mission, Williams set a spacewalk record for women astronauts. NASA says she and Wilmore also conducted more than 150 experiments. Karen Hua, CBS News, Houston. And that's not the only story coming from NASA today. Right now, Ohio leaders are lobbying to bring NASA HQ to the birthplace of aviation. They see an opportunity and believe Ohio would be a perfect place for NASA to call home. 10 TV political reporter Doug Petcash explains why they're doing this. The current lease for NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. expires in August of 2028, so the agency needs a new home. Governor Mike DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Jim Tressel wrote a letter to President Trump urging him to locate NASA HQ at NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. Thirteen members of the Ohio congressional delegation sent a similar letter to Vice President J.D. Vance and the NASA administrator designate. Along with touting NASA Glenn, they're spotlighting Ohio's cost of living and running a business compared to D.C., the Air Force Research Lab at Wright Patterson Air Force Base and Ohio's rich history in aeronautics as reasons for NASA to move here. Ohio is facing some stiff competition, though. Florida's U.S. Senators introduced a bill to move the headquarters to Florida's Space Coast. No word on when a decision on the location could be made. Doug Petcash, 10 TV News. Finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. Brown out conditions seen again along a New Mexico highway. 
Viewer Jonathan Loretto says traffic was at a standstill from this blowing dust. A dust storm warning was issued for portions of Interstate 25 and 40 along with other roads on Tuesday. The agency warned that dangerous life threatening travel and zero visibility could be caused by that dust. I can't even tell where they're at. I can't. <laughs> I've seen plenty of dust storms. I've never seen one with that low visibility yeah. before. I mean, I, I'm coming from in Michigan before. I've, I've driven through heavy lake effect bands, and even the heaviest snow I've ever driven in, I could see further than you can see out this guy's window. Where did the semi go? You gotta. I, I, I'll be the first one to admit I don't know a lot about cars, but like it's gonna be bad for the air filter. Oh, I, I mean, imagine. this would clog up the air filter. I mean, it could it could cause the car to shut down. It could cause it to just run very poorly. I mean, you just want to shut the car off for a bit and, and wait this kind of That's stuff crazy. out. That's crazy. All right, yeah. let's move on. And speaking of wild weather and the roads, check out this encounter. Boy, driver in Atlanta nearly misses a lightning strike during severe weather this past weekend. You know, there's a bit of a myth about lightning not being able to strike cars, but there's plenty of evidence to the contrary that comes out over the years. And lucky for this driver, they weren't speeding just a little bit faster. Otherwise, that bolt wouldn't hit the road. It would have hit them. You know, one thing I learned <laughs> is that when I studied lightning, it's not actually the rubber tires that protect you. It's the outer metal shield. Yeah, it's called Faraday the cage. Faraday cage. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, tomorrow, meteorologist Jerry Martz is doing a whole special on lightning, too. Yeah, more on our coverage of Severe Weather yeah. Awareness Week. There's all kinds of weather to be aware of. And I mean, again, lucky for that driver, they made it through just fine. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that does it for us here on 10TV+. Plus. Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz will be back with your forecast tonight at 6 o'clock.